Welcome back to the Hank Strange Situation, Lifestyles of the Locked and Loaded. Yeah, there's a massive machinery it? trying to take us down every day. Lots of money. Yep. Yeah. Yep. And yeah. that's another thing that people underestimate. This fight requires money. Mm -hmm. The NRA, as much money as they spent, Bloomberg outspent them by himself. Think about that. One man outspent an entire organization consistent of five million people. Mm -hmm. Think about that. This is a money game. Mm -hmm. And so, and for people to underestimate that, I think is a grave mistake. It's a grave and that it, like I think we should have as many as many pro two A organizations as we can possibly have. And, and and if you ask me, I'd say donate to all of them. Donate mm -hmm. to them all. Do, donate to all of them three four times over. But when you look at it, just take the tax records. Any other subsequent organ, the closest organization to their NRA is, is max. They pulled in maybe 10 mil. Mm -hmm. And then after that, it drops down to three mil. Mm -hmm. And then it just gets lower than that after that. We're talking about a man who outspent an organization that pulls in 300 million. Yeah. Do we have do we have any uh, multi multi billionaires like that on our side? Is there anyone out there that I, that I'm aware of? I think there are. The problem is, is the manner in which that they acquired their wealth, they're living in a space that they cannot come out publicly and be pro-gun. Because the moment they do, that wealth is now in jeopardy. It's no different than being a um, being a movie star, being a celebrity, mm -hmm. and I don't watch celebrities. Because I, it's very easy, and I've been falling into it in the earlier parts of my career, is straight up attacking any celebrity and calling them stupid. You don't know what the hell you're talking about. And a lot of them don't. Just to be honest with you, mm -hmm. but you can re you can tell the difference between the the adamant anti gun celebrities and the ones that are kind of like ah, I like this stuff, but I live in a world in space where my career depends on keeping my mouth shut, mm -hmm. right? And so they're gonna have to frame some things under the guise of oh this is just entertainment, or they're gonna go out and, and shoot with Heron or something like that. It, it, they it's oh this is fun because the world that they live in is not conducive to being outwardly pro two way and it's easy for a lot of us to say well you should you should respect the second amendment so much that you shouldn't care at the cost of what not being able to feed your family mm -hmm. right right you like like came to you and asked you that a lot of a lot of people can't even bring guns to the jobs that they work at mm -hmm. and if they have to make a decision between whether or not they bring a gun or not or quit their job they're gonna not bring yeah I mean I think that's with, I instance, think that's what and yeah that's kind of, I'm sorry. That's what you. Yeah, you kind of broke up there again. Um, th you, that's kind of what happened in Virginia recently, right? I don't know if that's what you were saying. Well, uh, I don't. I don't know. What you well, were I know. To. I know in Virginia, in this shooting, in in the shooting that happened there recently, there was someone who did have a CCW, but she didn't want to bring it to work. She thought something something could go wrong, but she didn't uh, do it because it was against the policy. Yes, you know, yes. So she, I wasn't referring to that, but I do okay. remember that. I do re adamantly mm -hmm. remember that. Yeah. 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 And which is unfortunate, right? You know, mm -hmm. you have somebody who could have possibly done something about it, but she was forced to make a decision between, well, may I be able to protect my life or save the life of other people or risk losing my job? Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. And and, and it's, it's it's highly unfortunate. Yeah. See, now we know what we would do. And I get that. Like, I know if there's people out there screaming, I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to go in. I get it. That's what I believe in. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm going to I'm going to go armed. Uh, my dad told me this. I grew up in New York City, right? So you really can't have. It's very difficult to have things uh, in New York. I don't know if we broke up here again, but uh, yeah, it's very difficult to have stuff in New York. Yeah, it's very tough to have stuff yeah, no, in New York. But my dad always told me, "You come home alive, no matter what it takes. Don't come back here in a box. Come back alive, and then we'll deal with all that the other stuff later." Um, there's a couple of things that I want to bring up in that regards. I know you were talking about the elderly gentleman that just got into a lot of trouble in New York because he defended his home. Um, mm -hmm. And then there was the Killer Mike thing, which goes back to what you're saying about the money. You and Killer Mike, I think, had a good conversation, but he turned on you when <laughs> you know basically the industry was like, "Hey, if you hold this, you know, no more money for you." I mean, by and large, I, me, me and Killer Mike are very cool. Mm -hmm. we're, we're still cool to this day. Okay. I understood I, I understood the situation he was in, to be honest with right. you. There's no bad blood between he and I at all with respect to that. Mm -hmm. um, because I, I understand the dynamic. I had a front row seat to it. And so you gotta, people, people also got to understand, it's mm -hmm. not just Killer Mike. Right. I, there's a ton of people. So I I'm sorry, you said there's and, a ton um, of people. Say that I, again. I, I, you said there's a there's ton, a ton of, of people that... There's a ton of people that feed their family based off the money he pulls in. Mm -hmm. you, you get what I'm saying? For sure. So 
you know, the decisions he makes don't only affect him, they affect a lot of people. Mm -hmm. So from that perspective, that's why I don't I don't really hold any bad blood or ill will towards him with respect to that. Um, just because I understand the dynamic in which in which he was existing in with respect to the issue. Yeah. Um, I don't by and large have to make those type of decisions because I'm I'm a two A advocate. Mm -hmm. Right. So my level of risk in that regard is rather low on the front end, on the back end. I'm not going to be received well <laughs> if I if I venture outside of the gun space for the most part. Mm -hmm. um, and then again, I, I take that back because I've been quite surprised mm -hmm. by, you know, behind the scenes about the people that a lot of people who support me that I think would other. And, you know, I'm, I'm just out and about somewhere. They tell me these things, you know, um, especially after I did Bill Maher. Doing Bill Maher really brought a lot of people out of the closet because there's a lot of people who were like, you know, I'm, I'm a liberal, but, um, you know, I'm not a full blown gun person. But, you know, seeing you on the show and listening to your points, I see where you're coming from, man. Like, I truly get it. And so I got a lot of that after Bill Maher. And so it kind of changed my my mindset a little bit about how I deal or talk about certain issues with respect to the dynamic of the Second Amendment, Hollywood and people who are liberal and kind of on the fence about guns. And then, you know, you get what I'm saying? Yeah. No, I've been there, too. I think there's lots of people out there that do believe in guns, do believe in defending themselves. I think it, when it comes to money, that's where things like I come across that all the time um, in the broadcasting world, which is what I think we're doing here. You know, yeah. but lots of gun guys don't see that. Um, I deal with people in the broadcasting world, and they're like, "Man, you're cool. We would love to have you come and do these speeches." You know, oh wait a second. You know what? I believe in guns, but the other people at the company don't. Huh? I'm working out. Yeah. I, so a lot of times, what I hear is that people people want to do stuff with us, and they believe in the guns, but the other people in the company don't, and that's where it all stops. Yeah, and I think that's the one thing we have to understand about the community as a whole. Mm -hmm. it, it like. It's so easy to kind of marginalize us and, and call us the fringe group. And we have to understand that the biggest to me personally, right? Like with, 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 with respect to what I do, I can see my, I see myself as a converter. That's, that's, and I wear it like a badge. Mm -hmm. Like when I talk to people, I tell them, I am trying to convert you. I'm not trying to hide the ball here. I am mm -hmm. trying to convert you. And I think I'm relatively good at it. Mm -hmm. Now, that being said, I think the most finite way of protecting the Second Amendment. And the best way, to, one of the best ways of protecting the Second Amendment is creating new gun owners. Mm -hmm. and, and the way we do that is allowing the culture of guns to continue to grow. We have to bring people to the tent as possible to the point where the tent's overflowing, we have to get a bigger tent. And so that's why for me, the cultural aspect of things is incredibly important. I grew up a large part of my life not being pro-gun. So there were a ton of stuff that I was already into before I got into firearms. Mm -hmm. And so what I did with the firearms, I just incorporated that into my lifestyle. And so I get little snicker, I get little comments here and there about certain music that I listen to, things that I'm into, certain, you know, so on and so forth. And that's fine. You don't have to be into what I'm into. But there are a ton of people who relate to me based on those things. Because I was that I was that guy. I'm them. I was the guy who prior to getting into firearms was kind of like, eh, know about this firearm kind of stuff let me do my job let mm -hmm. me do it 